Relative density, relative density, or specific gravity, is the ratio of the density, mass of a unit volume, of a substance to the density of a given reference material. Specific gravity usually means relative density with respect to water. The term relative density is often preferred in scientific usage. It is defined as a ratio of density of particular substance with that of water. If a substance's relative density is less than 1 then it is less dense than the reference, if greater than 1 then it is denser than the reference. If the relative density is exactly 1 then the densities are equal, that is, equal volumes of the two substances have the same mass. If the reference material is water then a substance with a relative density, or specific gravity, less than 1 will float in water. For example, an ice cube, with a relative density of about 0.91, will float. A substance with a relative density greater than 1 will sink. Temperature and pressure must be specified for both the sample and the reference. Pressure is nearly always 1 atmosphere, 101.325 kPa. Where it is not, it is more usual to specify the density directly. Temperatures for both sample and reference vary from industry to industry. In British brewing practice, the specific gravity as specified above is multiplied by 1000. Specific gravity is commonly used in industry as a simple means of obtaining information about the concentration of solutions of various materials such as brines, sugar solutions, syrups, juices, honeys, brewer's wort, must, etc., and acids. Relative density, road, or specific gravity, SG, is a dimensionless quantity, as it is the ratio of either densities or weights. Where road is relative density, Rho is the density of the substance being measured, and Rho is the density of the reference. By convention Rho, the Greek letter Rho, denotes density. The reference material can be indicated using subscripts, Rho, which means the relative density of substance with respect to reference. If the reference is not explicitly stated then it is normally assumed to be water at 4 degrees Celsius, or, more precisely, 3.98 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature at which water reaches its maximum density. In SI units, the density of water is, approximately 1000 kg m or 1 gram cm, which makes relative density calculations particularly convenient, the density of the object only needs to be divided by 1000 or 1, depending on the units. The relative density of gases is often measured with respect to dry air at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 101.325 kPa absolute which has a density of 1.205 kg m. Relative density with respect to air can be obtained by where m is the molar mass and the approximately equal sign is used because equality pertains only if one mole of the gas and one mole of air occupy the same volume at a given temperature and pressure i.e. they are both ideal gases. Ideal behavior is usually only seen at very low pressure. For example, one mole of an ideal gas occupies 22.414 liters at 0 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere whereas carbon dioxide has a molar volume of 22.259 liters under those same conditions. The density of substances varies with temperature and pressure so that it is necessary to specify the temperatures and pressures at which the densities or mass square are determined. It is nearly always the case that measurements are made at nominally one atmosphere, 101.325 kPa ignoring the variations caused by changing weather patterns, but as relative density usually refers to highly incompressible aqueous solutions or other incompressible substances, such as petroleum products, variations in density caused by pressure are usually neglected at least where apparent relative density is being measured. For true, in vacuo. Relative density calculations air pressure must be considered, see below. Temperatures are specified by the notation, T, T, with T representing the temperature at which the sample's density was determined and T the temperature at which the reference, water, density is specified. For example, SG, 20 degrees Celsius slash 4 degrees Celsius, would be understood to mean that the density of the sample was determined at 20 degrees Celsius and of the water at 4 degrees Celsius. Taking into account different sample and reference temperatures, we note that while SG equals 1.000000, 20 degrees Celsius slash 20 degrees Celsius, it is also the case that road equals equals 0.998363, 20 degrees Celsius slash 4 degrees Celsius. Here temperature is being specified using the current ITS-90 scale and the densities used here and in the rest of this article are based on HAT scale. On the previous IPTS-68 scale the densities at 20 degrees Celsius and 4 degrees Celsius are, 
respectively, 0.9982071 and 0.9999720 resulting in en-road, 20 degrees Celsius slash 4 degrees Celsius, value for water off 0.9982343. The temperatures of the two materials may be explicitly stated in the density symbols, for example where the superscript indicates the temperature at which the density of the material is measured, and the subscript indicates the temperature of the reference S substance to which it is compared. Relative density can also help to quantify the buoyancy of a substance in a fluid, or determine the density of an unknown substance from the known density of another. Relative density is often used by geologists and mineralogists to help determine the mineral content of a rock or other sample. Gemologists use it as an aid in the identification of gemstones. Water is preferred as the reference because measurements are then easy to carry out in the field. See below for examples of measurement methods. As the principal use of relative density measurements in industry is determination of the concentrations of substances in aqueous solutions and these are found in tables of road versus concentration it is extremely important that the analyst enter the table with the correct form of relative density. For example, in the brewing industry, the Plato table, which lists sucrose concentration by mass against true road, were originally 20 degrees Celsius slash 4 degrees Celsius. That is based on measurements of the density of sucrose solutions made at laboratory temperature, 20 degrees Celsius, but reference to the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius which is very closet of the temperature at which water has its maximum density of rho, equal to 0.999972 grams slash cm, or 62.43 pounds middle dot foot. The ASBC table in use today in North America while it is derived from the original Plato table is for apparent relative density measurements at 20 degrees Celsius slash 20 degrees Celsius, on the IPTS 68 scale where the density of water is 0.9982071 gram slash cm. In the sugar, soft drink, honey, fruit juice and related industries sucrose concentration by mass is taken from this work which uses SG 17.5 degrees Celsius slash 17.5 degrees Celsius. As a final example, the British road units are based on reference and sample temperatures of 60 degrees Fahrenheit and are thus, 15.56 degrees Celsius slash 15.56 degrees Celsius. Relative density can be calculated directly by measuring the density of a sample and dividing it by the, known, density of the reference substance. The density of the sample is simply its mass divided by its volume. Although mass is easy to measure, the volume of an irregularly shaped sample can be more difficult to ascertain. One method is to put the sample in a water fill graduated cylinder and read off how much water it displaces. Alternatively, the container can be filled to the brim, the sample immersed, and the volume of overflow measured. The surface tension of the water may keep a significant amount of water from overflowing, which is especially problematic for small samples. For this reason, it is desirable to use a water container with as small a mouth as possible. For each substance, the density, rho, is given by. When these densities are divided, references to the spring constant, gravity and cross-sectional area simply cancel, leaving. Relative density is more easily and perhaps more accurately measured without measuring volume. Using a spring scale, the sample is weighed first in air anthon and water. Relative density, with respect to water, can then be calculated using the following formula. Where? This technique cannot easily be used to measure relative densities less than 1, because the sample will then float. W becomes a negative quantity, representing the force needed to keep the sample underwater. Another practical method uses three measurements. The sample is weighed dry. Then a container filled to the brim with water is weighed, and weighed again with a sample immersed, after the displaced water has overflowed and been removed. Subtracting the last reading from the sum of the first two readings gives the weight of the displaced water. The relative density result is the dry sample weight divided by that of the displaced water. This method works with scales that can't easily accommodate a suspended sample, and also allows for measurement of samples that are less dense than water. The relative density of a liquid can be measured using a hydrometer. This consists of a bulb attached to a stalk of constant cross-sectional area, as shown in the adjacent diagram. First, the hydrometer is floated in the reference liquid, shown in light blue, and the displacement. The level of the liquid on the stalk, is marked, blue line. The reference could be any liquid, but in practice it is usually water. The hydrometer is then floated in a liquid of unknown density, shown in green. The change in displacement, 
delta x, is noted. In the example depicted, the hydrometer has dropped slightly in the green liquid, hence its density is lower than that of the reference liquid. It is, of course, necessary that the hydrometer floats in both liquids. The application of simple physical principles allows the relative density of the unknown liquid to be calculated from the change in displacement. In practice the stock of the hydrometer is pre-marked with graduations to facilitate this measurement. In the explanation that follows, since the floating hydrometer is in static equilibrium, the downward gravitational force acting upon it must exactly balance the upward buoyancy force. The gravitational force acting on the hydrometer is simply its weight, mg. From the Archimedes buoyancy principle, the buoyancy force acting on the hydrometer is equal to the weight of liquid displaced. This weight is equal to the mass of liquid displaced multiplied by g, which in the case of the reference liquid is rho vg. Setting these equal, we have or just exactly the same equation applies when the hydrometer is floating in the liquid being measured, except that the new volume is b, a delta x, see note above about the sign of delta x. Thus, combining, 1, and, 2, yields, but from, 1, we have v equals m. Rho. Substituting into 3 gifts. This equation allows the relative density to be calculated from the change in displacement, the known density of the reference liquid, and the known properties of the hydrometer. If delta x is small, then, as a first order approximation of the geometric series equation, 4 can be written as this shows that, for small delta x, changes in displacement are approximately proportional to changes in relative density. A pycnometer, from Greek, pi upsilon kappa nu sigma, pupnos, meaning dense, also called pycnometer or specific gravity bottle, is a device used to determine the density of a liquid. A pycnometer is usually made of glass, with a close-fitting ground glass stopper with a capillary tube through it, so that air bubbles may escape from the apparatus. This device enables a liquid's density to be measured accurately by reference to an appropriate working fluid, such as water or mercury using an analytical balance. If the flask is weighed empty, full of water, and full of a liquid whose relative density is desired, the relative density of the liquid can easily be calculated. The particle density of a powder, to which the usual method of weighing cannot be applied, can also be determined with a pycnometer. The powder is added to the pycnometer, which is then weighed, giving the weight of the powder sample. The pycnometer is then filled with a liquid of known density, in which the powder is completely insoluble. The weight of the displaced liquid can then be determined, and hence the relative density of the powder. There is also a gas-based manifestation of a pycnometer known as a gas pycnometer. It compares the change in pressure caused by a measured change in a closed volume containing a reference, usually a steel sphere of known volume, with a change in pressure caused by the sample under the same conditions. The difference in change of pressure represents the volume of the sample as compared to the reference sphere and is usually used for solid particulates that may dissolve in the liquid medium of the pycnometer design described above, or for porous materials into which the liquid would not fully penetrate. When a pycnometer is filled to a specific, but not necessarily accurately known volume, V and is placed upon a balance, it will exert a force. Where M is the mass of the bottle and G the gravitational acceleration at the location at which the measurements are being made. Rho is the density of the air at the ambient pressure and Rho is the density of the material of which the bottle is made, usually glass, so that the second term is the mass of air displaced by the glass of the bottle whose weight, by Archimedes' principle must be subtracted. The bottle is, of course, filled with air but as that air displaces an equal amount of air the weight of that air is cancelled by the weight of the air displaced. Now we fill the bottle with the reference fluid for example pure water. The force exerted on the pan of the balance becomes if we subtract the force measured on the empty bottle from this, or tear the balance before making the water measurement, we obtain where the subscript and indicated that this force is net of the force of the empty bottle. The bottle is now emptied, thoroughly dried and refilled with the sample. The force, net of the empty bottle, is now where rho is the density of the sample. The ratio of the sample and water forces is this is called the apparent relative density, denoted by subscript A because it is what we would obtain if we took the ratio of net weighings in air from an analytical balance or used a hydrometer, the stem displaces air. Note that the result does not depend on the calibration of the balance. The only requirement on it is that it read linearly with force. Nor does road depend on the actual volume of the pycnometer.
further manipulation and finally substitution of road, the true relative density. The subscript B is used because this is often referred to as the relative density in vacuo. For rho, rho gives the relationship between apparent and true relative density. In the usual case we will have measured weights and want the true relative density. This is found from since the density of dry air at 101.325 kPa at 20 degrees Celsius is 0.001205 grams cm and that of water is 0.998203 grams cm we see that the difference between true and apparent relative densities for a substance with relative density, 20 degrees Celsius slash 20 degrees Celsius, of about 1.100 would be 0.000120 where the relative density of the sample is close to thaf water, for example dilute ethanol solutions, the correction is even smaller. The pycnometer is used in ISO standard, ISO 1183 to 1 to 2004, ISO 1014 to 1985 and ASTM standard, ASTM D854. Types Hydrostatic pressure-based instruments, this technology relies upon Pascal's principle which states that the pressure difference between two points within a vertical column of fluid is dependent upon the vertical distance between the two points, the density of the fluid and the gravitational force. This technology is often used for tank gauging applications as a convenient means of liquid level and density measure. Vibrating element transducers, this type of instrument requires a vibrating element to be placed in contact with the fluid of interest. The resonant frequency of the element is measured and is related to the density of the fluid by a characterization that is dependent upon the design of the element. In modern laboratories precise measurements of relative density are made using oscillating YouTube meters. These are capable of measurement to 5 to 6 places beyond the decimal point and are used in the brewing, distilling, pharmaceutical, petroleum and other industries. The instruments measure the actual massa fluid contained in a fixed volume at temperatures between 0 and 80 degrees Celsius but as they are microprocessor based can calculate apparent or true relative density and contain tables relating these to the strengths of common acids, sugar solutions, etc. The vibrating fork immersion probe is another good example of this technology. This technology also includes many Coriolis-type mass flow meters which are widely used in chemical and petroleum industry for high-accuracy mass flow measurement and can be configured to also output density information based on the resonant frequency of the vibrating flow tubes. Ultrasonic transducer Ultrasonic waves are passed from a source, through the fluid of interest, and into a detector which measures the acoustic spectroscopy of the waves. Fluid properties such as density and viscosity can be inferred from the spectrum. Radiation-based gauge, radiation is passed from a source, through the fluid of interest, and into a scintillation detector, or counter dot as the fluid density increases, the detected radiation counts will decrease. The source is typically the radioactive isotope cesium-137, with a half-life of about 30 years. A key advantage for this technology is that the instrument is not required to be in contact with the fluid, typically the source and detector are mounted on the outside of tanks or piping. Buoyant force transducer, the buoyancy force produced by a float in a homogeneous liquid is equal to the weight of the liquid that is displaced by the float. Since buoyancy force is linear with respect to the density of the liquid within which the float is submerged, the measure of the buoyancy force yields a measure of the density of the liquid. One commercially available unit claims the instrument is capable of measuring relative density with an accuracy of plus or minus 0.005 road units. The submersible probe head contains a mathematically characterized spring float system. When the head is immersed vertically in the liquid, the float moves vertically and the position of the float controls the position of a permanent magnet whose displacement is sensed by a concentric array of Hall effect linear displacement sensors. The output signals of the sensors are mixed in a dedicated electronics module that provides a single output voltage whose magnitude is a direct linear measure of the quantity to be measured. Substances with a relative density of 1 are neutrally buoyant, those with road greater than 1 are denser than water, and so, ignoring surface tension effects will sink in it, and those with an road of less than 1 are less dense than water, and so will float. Example, thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.